Hello and welcome to Dice Friends. This and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. And this episode of By Law and Order is also brought to you by Dragon Shield. You can check out their selection of board game sleeves, companion folios, and other great tabletop gaming accessories at dragonshield.com. And if you're looking to run your own Ravnica adventures, this is a great time to mention our affiliate link with DriveThruRPG. You can go to lrr.cc slash DriveThruRPG, and anything you buy, such as your own Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, helps us out. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Although Ravnica is widely considered to be one of the safest and most welcoming multiversal tourism destinations, the plane is not without its dangers. For example, although it is extremely affordable, especially compared to more cosmopolitan destinations like Kaladesh, new arrivals are cautioned not to be dazzled by the favorable exchange rates, lest they find themselves in the company of one of Ravnica's many freelance financial re redistribution agents usually having been directed there at knife point. That said, to avoid Ravnica's true hazards, one must put aside obvious threats such as thieves or beasts, by which multiversal standards are not even that unique or dangerous, and instead turn a cautious eye towards anyone who invites you over for what they're going to call a traditional Ravnican meal. This is because after 10,000 years of relative peace, stability, and increasingly complicated civil engineering, a certain amount of cultural inertia has set in. Things are done the way they are because they have been done that way for, in what many cases, is literally thousands of years. To put that more approachably, in the time since the Ravnican tooth sausage was invented, supposedly created during the Great Famine of the 6680s, entire civilizations have risen from nothing, created rich and unique cultures based on the worship of breathtakingly destructive weapons, and then blown themselves back into icy nothing. When compared to this, it almost seems reasonable that people are still serving food made from boiled teeth. Almost. When we last left our party, they had just spoken to one Gorev Bruna, president of the 6th District Chamber of Commerce. Although he was described by his secretary Prayer as pretty mad that the murderer hadn't been caught yet, Bruno was actually so blindingly furious he had transcended mere anger and had looped all the way back around to polite and calm conversation. That said, the day wasn't a total bust. Slock took home many experimental mushrooms that are normally kept securely locked up and away from the public. Nog and Valencia got to swim in a giant ball pit. Avenir had several nightmares. And Enor got to ride a little train. They are currently in an elevator on their way out of the Chamber of Commerce building. think that went well like overall like the the conversation or like the day choo choo uh, i know uh, enor's I, vote i was lying <laughs> oh great does anybody else's tongue feel too big for their mouth no but i also didn't consume my weight in vegetation today yeah you got me him <laughs> Speaking of which, sorry about taking one of those mushrooms out of your pocket while we were up in the office. I didn't realize you did that. Kind of needed to. The guy was really getting on my nerves, so I decided to uh, avail myself of the help of one of my little friends. Oh, no. What does that mean? See, back when I was in prison, I had a friend who would smuggle things in for me in his butthole. All sorts of things. The sorts of things you can't normally get in prison and normally won't fit there either. He's yep. really good at it. So I had him teach me his technique, and I thought that to my little friends. Did you hoop Bruna? So remember that apple on Bruna's desk? Yeah. You, that you, was a pretty big apple, my friend. Yep. You, 
You boofed out his apple? Oh, no, not me. While you two were over looking at his pictures of his past, I was casting Tiny Servant on that thing. And that mushroom, what was that uh, when you had the, uh, the, uh... uh the doofin. The doofin, yeah. Uh, that, that little uh, apple dude crammed that entire mushroom up his ass. So when Bruna takes a bite of that apple, there's no way he's not going to be doofing for a quoofin. Jesus. You Wait. T- you drugged a man? <laughs> I'm sorry. You you put a mushroom that the Boofa Scoop has had a very long song warning you about. <laughs> no, I didn't put it in my ass. The apple put it in its ass. Oh, tiny servant. You used the actual, okay, okay. And then you used the tiny servant with the mushroom in its butt to get inside the apple? It is the, the tiny servant is the apple. Wait, uh, hold on. <laughs> you, an, you, you animated, animated an, apple. an apple and then got the apple to shove the mushroom up where the sun don't shine. Right. Anymore. That's its butthole. So, and he's going to, Take a bite of the apple. Mm-hmm. That's, but it's like a little guy. Is that not, is that not tremendously messed up? Oh, no, he's not a little guy anymore. It's okay. But, oh, that's okay. Then. But then how is it? The, I do not understand what you did, you know. <laughs> okay. is, there, is there not an apple with drugs in it? There's yes. absolutely an yeah. apple full of mushrooms sitting on Bruna's desk just waiting for a big bite. But how did... You know what? A wizard did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, you know. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, today's been a long day. What do we? Uh, you want to grab a beer? Yeah, actually. Is there like a pub nearby? Yeah. There is. Any number of pubs nearby. There's a, a pub nearby that a lot of Chamber of Commerce employees work at. I'm sure that you've been there, Slock, or you could suggest something else in the area. Mm, no, there, let's go to that one. That one? All yeah. right, what's it called? Rudgers, Rudgers. Rudgers, Rudgers? All right. Uh, okay, so uh, you're all sitting down at Rudgers, Rudgers. What are you all ordering? Oh. what what What's their specialty here? The Rudgers Rudgers Sour Sour. Oh, like the, that's the drink. Like it's a sour sour. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll take I'll take one of those. Okay. A round of Rudgers Rudgers Sours nope. or whatever else you wish to order has been delivered to you. Avenir, will you be having what? Like lukewarm tap water? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking like there has to be an equivalent of a Coke Zero with Bacardi. <laughs> you know, oh. the kind of thing that has no calories in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you can have you can have uh, the, the magical Ravnican Coke Zero with Bacardi. How many shots of how many fingers of Bacardi do uh, the barkeeper asks you? Uh, I, I think Avenir just assumes they're waving hello, and he awkwardly <laughs> waves back. Okay, so they don't really have Bacardi on Ravnica, but they do have a liquor called Bumbat, and mm-hmm. so you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you do the full wave? Yeah. You I'm get like, that much Bumbat. He looks confused and looks behind him, and then he's like... <laughs> if they don't have Ravnica and Coke, is Ravnica and Pepsi okay? <laughs> <laughs> Avenir prefers Ravnica and Pepsi. Oh... You know, me too. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's more for the youthful generation. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Do, they have a, do they have like a meal special here too? They do. You can get the Rutgers Rutgers platter platter. Oh, what's on that? A lot. <laughs> Lots of things. Honestly, with the lighting, I can never tell, but it's pretty cheap and it's pretty big. I'll take one of those. We'll share with the table. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. We'll take a platter for the table and I'll take a platter. All right, two platters, uh, a whole lot of bum bat for that guy who looks like he's seen some things today, and everybody else who's in a good mood. So we'll get some sour sours and brought those, bring those right over to you. What's your name? Uh, J- Jimmy. Oh, th- <laughs> thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, no worries, man. Just one? J- Jimmy's Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> well, I haven't been here long enough to get the, 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 the double name yet. Oh. I'm not through my probation period yet. Mm. Hi, just like me. 
Wait, you work here? No, no, no. probation. Oh, okay. He's gonna. He, Jimmy's gonna look at your ankle monitor and be like, mm. uh, "But you're gonna get great service for the rest of the night." He's gonna make. We're that, with the felon. Yeah, he's gonna make a connection between the ankle monitor and the teardrop tattoo. Mm. <laughs> Uh, there are some other Chamber of Commerce employees here if you want to talk and or avoid them because you said this is the bar close to the Chamber of Commerce. I don't know. I'm kind of burnt out. <laughs> we did a lot today. Yeah. All right. You will leave them to their... their anim- they seem to be discussing something quite animatedly. Oh. It's not important. Well. Most things animated aren't. <laughs> So what's our, what, what's, our, what's our game plan? What are we doing tomorrow? Well, we should go back to the university archive to see Dr. Midnight and see if we can... Such a cool name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Still right? cool. Like, I, yeah. I, I... Do, you ever, do you ever play, like, when you were a kid, like we had, you know, we have like the the, telev- the TV kind of program thing, but then you can ex- insert like a data disc or whatever, and it's like a board game that you can play. I swear, I swear, right. there's a villain named the ba- Dr. Midnight. The Bad Dream series of games. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems like a villain from that. I wasn't allowed to have those. Oh, why? I don't really know. Mm, religious Probab- reasons. Probably spite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, you saved yourself. They're not great. <laughs> um, right, I you- gotta talk to that one person who wrote me the letter. Hmm. What was their name? Marlo. 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 Do you want to? Do you want to send some magical correspondence? Maybe you could ask for an invitation to speak to the Society for Culinary Anachronism and request that Marlo meet you at the second precinct. Tomorrow? Sure, that sounds like a great idea. Can I? Can I like do it? Beep, beep. Reboot. Yep. Oh wait, do hold that. up. <laughs> hey Nog, what do you need? Hey, uh, long time no talk. Oh yeah, we've been. It's been like not great over here there is like a containment breach in the uh, archives so it's uh, delayed all of the evidence processing there is a gruel god in here and then somebody let it out there is a whole thing that you can read about in magic story by googling magicstory.com hmm. <laughs> i thought we already killed that pig or... no we captured him oh right yeah is there another one no this was a mole oh that was it, yeah. It was a big mole god that got let loose in our archives mm. or in our evidence lockers. Magicstory.com. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, non-spawn. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what do you need from me? Uh, w- would you be able to uh, put some correspondence into a one uh, Marlo? Uh, they wrote me, and uh, we wanted to have a conversation with the um, the food is is pretty good society. Uh, what was their name? Society, Society of Culinary, culinary Anachronism. Jinx, you owe me a Ravnik and Pepsi. Yeah, I can send a request for a meeting and uh, to both of those. That would be terrific if we could meet with them sometime tomorrow. Can do. All right. Uh, well, you know. Oh, you... wait. I made her go away too quick. Uh, no, t- you will t- take care of yourself. All right. Talk to you later, dog. Maybe uh, some point they will be. Maybe one day. Oh, whoops. I don't even know what they look like. Oh, shit. My boss is here. <laughs> oh, maybe Tizzy is in the, oh, in no. in the back. <laughs> we, that we got, I, can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. We got hey, it. isn't that your boss no, over up, there? Shut up, dude. Shut up. Shut up. Quiet, quiet, quiet. She's uh, she's talking to uh, two other people who are like trying to excitedly pitch her on something, mm. and she does not look impressed. She's kind of sitting there going. She never does. <sighs> uh-huh. Yeah. That's uh. This is an interest. Do you guys want to listen in, or do you just want to leave her to be unimpressed with whatever idiotic scheme is being foisted on her? Uh, Eavesdropping seems rude. Slock goes like this <laughs> and pushes his ear out, and it almost looks like it expands a little bit. Do you still have super ears? Uh, <laughs> do I? You don't. If I uh, take some, if I take <laughs> something here, yeah. surely, surely, surely I can hear better. Yeah. Uh, uh, and as Slock does it, you just hear a boop kind of noise all right i'm gonna say that that she is looking unimpressed because this is two people from the marketing department and uh whose idea was mr sausage again whose idea was mr sausage i mean i think somebody at this table might have said that they suggested that they put mr sausage in the suggestion box 
No, it was Al Alvin Ear. Alvin Ear. It, it was, was Alvin Ear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, whoever whoever ideas it was, they're running with it in the marketing department. Yeah. They are they are trying to convince Tizia that Mr. Sausage needs to needs to have merchandise that they could unveil at that big swamp ball game. They're talking about Oh my god, I wrote this and then we never used this, so I thought I'll just put these employees back here instead of the cafeteria. You know what they're talking about? They're talking about um, the most commonly uh, requested merchandise uh, items, which is one, Mr. Sausage Body Pillows, or B, that the character is immediately retired. <laughs> So, so Tizzy is like, yeah, yeah, that second one sounds great. And they're like, no, 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 it's got two sides for different moods. Mm. You know, Mr. Sausage would make a pretty good, like, horror movie villain. What's a movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, a real. Oh. Yeah. So it's real. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. 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 So Tizia's suggestion is that uh, that they do not do that. But she so she says, uh, as, as far as you can make out, she says, well, I don't know. Why don't you take him to one of them uh, Rad Rakdos uh, light entertainment shows? Those are popular with the youth. And they say, well, yeah, but the suit's not flame retardant enough. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. You should write that down and then yeah. burn it. I still don't <laughs> understand how the person in there functions. Person in there? <laughs> you know... Mr. Sausage was a custom-grown organism, yes. courtesy of the Combine. You were sent over here it. by the Simmons. Simmons yeah, I would good not, work these know, days. Yeah, yeah crossbreeding <laughs> yeah. sausage with feet. <laughs> Do you think it ever gets lonely being the only Mr. Sausage in the world? Maybe they need to make a Mr. Sausage. Or Mrs. Sausage. Or Mr. Sausage. Who cares? Make both. Yeah. Ooh, a threesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would have or assumed that, sausage. Yeah, I would have assumed that Mr. Sausage is actually a colonial organism, <laughs> and that there's thousands of them in there. Oh, they oh. reproduce asexually. Yeah, yeah, they just flake off. It's like those dinosaurs oh. you put in water and they get real big. I assume this is literally what we're talking about over beers. Right? Yeah, Avenir is getting extremely hammered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Roll some dice to see if I'm getting drunk. Um, <laughs> he's like, yeah. Uh, Midway through this, he actually writes a note to Ogavan asking about the significance of 116. All right, that sounds good. Uh, that will be sent off. And, uh, and. I mean, I can get Jeffrey to send it away. Yeah, sure. Uh, or send if, it yeah. to Ogavan? Yeah. Yep. Okay, sounds good. So that you've also done that. You've, you've, uh, what are you asking Ogavan if there's um, anything significant? Yeah, like what? Ask him. Uh, I write down Kazanet or Psalm. Intro it, Kazanet, one one six, and ask him if like there's a significance. What what do these mean to you, if anything? Do you want to put any bribes in there? <laughs> yeah, I probably should. Um, I roll diplomacy. I think. Um, religion. What's an appropriate bribe? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, yeah. You know what? It's not like it's gonna. There, it's not like you're bribing Agabin directly, but uh, if you throw in like five Zeno or something like that, it is actually going to get delivered to his desk. Okay, uh, yeah. As opposed to, to it goes into the overflowing mail slot where everybody who's having problems with their finances is mailing letters requesting appointments. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it was like more of a um, uh, courier fee. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. You have mailed something with an appropriate courier fee. Uh, for more information on how the Orzov will nickel and dime you at every chance, Google magicstory.com. <laughs> it's true. Kaya does it to people. Anyhow. <clears throat> All right. Non-spawn. Non-spawn. No, they can't. They can't they, stop us. Yeah, they would rather probably us not make up all of these things. Mm. Well, actually, I don't know if that's true. Come on, the Mr. Hot Dog secret hey. layer is got, or Mr. Sausage secret mm. layer. Look at this face, Watsy. We're just putting it out there. You can have this for free. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel well. well you can <laughs> license it from Featherweight. Yeah. <laughs> I feel in an upcoming set, maybe we just get instead of a dungeon or an adventure, we just have a secret layer mm -hmm. that you advance through. I mean, Avenir exists in the canon. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. There's a, a there, there's a flavor text Avenir reference. Yeah, but it's on soon. generous gift. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. If soon. It, we if, could become a part of Magic's history. You too, Slock. 
I just want that to be the flavor text. Yeah. <laughs> you, you too, too Slock. <laughs> now, technically, it's credited to somebody named Avenir the Petty. Yeah. I don't know if that would be this. <laughs> 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 no. uh, get, a, get enough Bacardi and. Yeah. Uh... All well, right. it's. Uh, You've well, had some beers. You've yeah. had some fried food. Everybody's feeling a lot better after a hard day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nothing right. feels. Wait, what was on the platter? Don't oh, yeah. Know. What was on the platter? Oh, can't tell. Lighting's can't... terrible. Mm. But uh, stuff was fried. Yeah, everything that you could think of that could be described as fries. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Segmented. <laughs> A variety of chicken tendies and fake chicken tendies mm. and mu- fried mushrooms. It would be interesting to have a chicken tender and a mozzarella stick that are shaped exactly the same, and then you don't know which one you're biting into. <laughs> Maybe they Rapidly serve this roulette. platter like on a roulette <laughs> wheel, oh, and you actually yeah. just spin to see what you get. You guys ever have a bloom and scarab? <laughs> You know, it doesn't taste too bad, honestly. Crunchy. Mm. Is that a leg? Statistically, yes. Yeah. It kind of wriggles in my mouth as I eat it. <laughs> well, they do use everything in Ravnica. It's very recycling conscious, I assume, on they account just, of how it is. There's just a pack rat in the back, and they carve sections off that grow back. <laughs> it's just, oh. Is it spinning around like a, yeah, like like a, a shawarma? Kebab, yeah. <laughs> Rotating rat. <laughs> <laughs> just a little lazy Susan. Gross. Well, on that note, I'm going to bed. You wake up. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, yesterday was gray and rainy and stuff like that. But it's it's uh, and it's, so it's a little bit misty and stuff this morning. But it's not nearly as bad. Uh, is as the sun out? The sun is just starting to maybe peek out after it's been raining all night. Nog is wearing shorts. Oh, you're one of those people. <laughs> yeah, the sun's out, buns out. I'm bringing shorts to Chicago. Short shorts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They are now. Well, you said Nog's a sun's out, bun's out kind of yeah, guy. Yeah, all right. Yeah, no, he's he's still he's still got his like badge, but maybe he's now like short shorts and like Miami voice vice style. Okay, that sounds good. Every- Sands the mustache, I guess, because yeah. he can't grow one. Are you going to bring a backpack today, just in case? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank God. I have a bag. I have a small bag. A Great. backpack. All right. Well, uh, so the first. So, do you want to go to the archives, or do you want to go to uh, go, want to go to the 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 second precinct morgue where you told everybody where you told Marlo to meet you? Which one do you want to do first? I guess we should probably meet with Doctor Midnight first, eh? Yeah. And then we can mm-hmm. head on over to the the morgue. Yeah, I, I'm. Can I think of any reason why it matters? What order we do it in? No, I don't. Okay. We said we meet him yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We figured it's only we've kept, him, yeah. we've kept him waiting. You know, first, first, no, first in, first out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, there we go. All right. So you, uh, I'm not going to run you through. Capizza Dirac, there are no new message board notices. You were there yesterday. The ads on the subway are still the same. It's been like a week at this point. That's okay. But you come to the archives, and even though it is a much nicer day, and the sun is starting to peek out, the buns are starting to peek out. The archives are still dull and gray on the inside, and this spring light just seems to be weakened. It's filtered through the building's macabre, mostly green and, and blood red colored stained glass windows. Uh, and uh, uh, that same small goblin is still there. She's still reading, but she's t- reading a different a different Negrina Plantax books today. The hers, this one is The Lady in the Underlake. I assure you that's a joke for someone. Uh, and uh, when she sees you arrive, she goes, Oh my God, Dr. Midnight, they came back. I've never seen people come back. That's so cool. Dr. Midnight, they're back. They're back. Hi, everybody. Uh, Nog kind of like sees if there's like, is there like a stool or a chair kind of in this room at all that's like in like the open area? Uh, I mean, there's a counter and she's sitting on a stool because okay. she's a goblin. Uh, we well, could say that there's a step stool somewhere that you okay. could get. Nog just kind of comes in and goes like, Hey, we're back. Oh, all right. So are you here to uh, pick up your book? It's almost done dehydrating. We had to put it on the low and slow setting. So am I. (laughs) Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? Why are you yelling? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we're not yelling, she says enthusiastically. You okay, Avenir? (laughs) 
the sound echoes in this enormous uh horrific building avenir uh, has become visibly hung over in the last 15 minutes hey, <laughs> do you need something to like you know perk yourself up you want a little treat i got a cookie here for you if you want i'll turn you into a cat boy or a normal brownie. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, of- Avenir wonders what it would be like to, to 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 throw up as a cat boy and if you would have to back away from it like a tube of toothpaste. I, you, <laughs> you would have to do the, oh, whoa, well, whoa, well, whoa, well, like the, the wind the, up. Yeah, the pumping noise. I, I, we still have that if you want Horrible. the cookie. <laughs> And I, and I did write down that it gives you a plus two to hairball checks, which might actually be relevant. Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, why that's not? A good use of it. Slock, Slock gives uh, Avenir the uh, cat boy cookie. All right. That's going to take a few minutes to take effect as last time because it's got to pass through your digestive system. But in about 15 minutes, your uh, character art will change. And uh, for a temporary amount of time, say about an hour and a half, you will have a plus two bonus to athletics checks and dexterity checks and hairball checks. Um, Everything's going to be feline. <laughs> Perfect. Fel- felining much better. Mm, perfect. Perfect. All right. While, while this is happening, uh, Dr. Midnight sort of uh, glides out of the back office, and you'll be happy about this, Avenir, appears completely soundlessly behind you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yes. Welcome to the archive. Oh, I'm sorry. It's very dank in here. So my voice is a little funny today. <laughs> Welcome to the Capita Drac University Archives. How may I help you? Um, Avenir? Hi. Uh, we, we had dropped off a extremely water damaged book that was part of an ongoing agency investigation yeah and we're hoping that it would be able to be uh repaired or recovered and we're also curious if you had ever seen anything like it before yes uh he brings out the book and as you and if you've ever gotten a book wet and then dried it out uh, you know how they kind of like fan out and stuff mm-hmm. like that? They've done their best here, but it's not... I mean, it was sitting in water for an unknown period of time. Uh, in fact, I'll just have Dr. Midnight explain this to you. Yes, the book. The book had been sitting in water for what I estimate to be not super long, but maybe about a week, possibly. Jesus. So it had begun to break down. However, we were able to dehydrate it Fairly well. I would not handle it extensively. Were this to be entered into, were this an archived manuscript, we would cut the pages out of the spine and rebind it. Uh, however, uh, this appears to be a mass printed thing. I would base by the size and paper that it may have been printed here at the university. Uh, that is my supposition, but of course, impossible to tell because it does not include any printer's information. Mm. Uh, but it should be uh, okay to read carefully uh the spine may snap uh and the pages may fall out because the glue is is barely holding on at this point uh is there anything you can tell us about its construction or you you said you assumed that it was printed here yes it does seem to have it seems to have the same grade of paper and is printed with the same cover stock and the same size that many academic journals here are printed at and it seems to be a high quality bound product uh if i had to guess and he's like he's looking at the paper he's like this does seem like paper that would be made in the sixth district but i noticed this is not a book about the sixth district and in fact i look through and we only got one line of an entry it says it's mostly filled with fetid swamp. That's a bit rude. Yeah, it <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Anyhow, here, here is your book. Is there anything else that I can do for you? Um, actually, I, I had a question here. Oh, excellent! What would that be? Wondering if you had the uh, the records of the uh, of the campus university paper, uh, prefer- preferably the sports section from around. Uh, Ot 41 through Ot 44. Oh, absolutely. We do have the mm-hmm. complete archives of the Capizza Dirac Starling here. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Is uh, it on those uh, those 1 to 100,000th scale uh, Ichthians? 
Are you making a microfiche joke? Yes! <laughs> I yes! did not catch that that quickly. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Excellent joke. Yes, we do have a, uh, uh, a microfiche machine. I can't think of a Ravnican pun for microfiche. So yes, we do have a microfiche machine. We do not have it broken up by sports section. We just have whole uh, whole papers archived at, as you know, as were. That should be fine. Okay. That's going to be a lot to go through. Well, uh, you can, uh, please, uh, you can direct there. Is there anything else I can? People so rarely come in here. They seem to be afraid of the archives. Mm. Probably because of all the crimes that were committed here. What? The windows. The atrocities. I look at the windows. What? Uh, hold up. I have to go back. The archives. Uh, the this uh, the uh, the cheery plaque outside the door that told you this was the laboratory of uh, Aglamon block mads uh, and uh, and uh, then after he was arrested it was uh, the Ravnica's first clinic dedicated to reconstructive defrogification that's why all the stained glass mm -hmm. windows are people being like taken apart and turned back into people and there's all the blood <laughs> I huh. just thought it was you know art Ambiance. Any... Ambiance yep. is a way of putting it, yes. Buildings can hold anything you want. I, for one, live in a Carson D. Cacklers. Oh, my nephew went there for his birthday once. Are they I... all right? Oh, uh, he loved it. I, he said they had a very impressive KDR. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> very pog. <laughs> Incredibly weird champ, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Anyhow, and he floats along. Uh, Dr. Midnight is a vampire. Yes. Yeah. We got <laughs> that. Uh, so maybe there's a reason people don't want to work with him, but uh, the, young, the young goblin who's obsessed with crime fiction doesn't seem to mind working here in this horrible, creepy archive. He's and not even a hot vampire. He's so cool, though. I gave Featherweight the name Dr. Midnight, <laughs> and I said, this is who works here. And, and I said, can you get me some character art? And Featherweight said, can he be a vampire? I said, really, it's up to you. A lot of the personalities for these NPCs were determined by how Featherweight drew them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what you get. Anyhow, he kind of hovers along. He's like, what, we'd, what would you do? What would we do in the shadows, vampire, yeah. though? He's hmm. like, not that threatening he's my favorite guy so far oh yeah. good yes he's great he's very enthusiastic so he's going to direct you to the microfiche machine that has the archives of the starling and he's going to pull out the reel that's like 90 uh, uh 10,046 uh 40 40 to 10,050 and you can that's where it is but you can flip through is there anything else you would like me to look up uh does the name dr probnos ring any bells for you uh specifically in nine or uh a 42 expedition. Oh, let me get a school yearbook for you. And he, he goes around to another section. He goes, ah, oh, these are just in a box. I will just be a second. Uh, does anybody want to make me a perception check while you're waiting for... Ooh. 19. 19. 20. 20. 25. 25. 8. 8. <laughs> This place is creepy. <laughs> this place is kind of weird. Uh, yeah, there is a strange clicking in here, and but you will follow it, and it's not going to freak you out. It, it's a there is a humidity f monitoring device in a couple shelves over, and it is flashing red. Mm. Uh, what does that mean? Too much humidity. Oh. It, like, can't keep up with it. Yeah. Uh, and then if you keep looking around, I'll just tell you everything that you will find. Uh, you hear these uh, weird uh, uh, the simic made sponge creatures scuttling around. And what they are is they're, they're weird hybrids that suck moisture out of the air while they hunt the rats that live here. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Handy. Really double good. duty. Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, can I figure out why the moisture detector is losing its mind? Uh, it seems to, the trap needs to be emptied. Oh, okay. It's, Pull the trap. There's a rat in there eating one of those sponges. <laughs> and it pulls the trap back closed. I let it. <laughs> oh, 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 God. <laughs> 
hey. Avenir was suddenly overcome by a desire to catch the rat. Oh. Well, you are. And then. It has, <laughs> yeah. it has been about 15 minutes. Yeah. Like, he had the desire to catch the rat and then is overcome by what his brain inserted as what the rat would taste like. Oh. <clears throat> oh. There was a, a stand up comedian who said that, like, she was in a cab once and started smelling fried chicken, then realized it was the cabbie's B.O. and that it made her hungry. Oh. And that's like Avenir went through that entire experience in about half a second with a rat. Would you like to make that hairball check now? I would n- no, very much not like to. But here we are. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, con save. Yeah, a con save against vomiting a hairball. Eight. Eight. Uh, you have to cough up a hairball. I run for the door. All right. Uh, and then you cough up a horrible hairball. Yeah. Maybe somebody sees you do this. Maybe they don't. <laughs> okay. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, while Avenir is going to barf up a hairball, uh, and a lot of bumbat from last night is going to sort of lubricate its way out, I think, uh, this uh, the, uh, Midnight's going to uh, float back to you, and he's going to say, Ah, yes, Dr. Probnos, yes. Dr. Gribben Probnos taught pre-Guild Pact history and led a groundbreaking research expedition into the Rubble Belt to learn about Gruel clan oral traditions. He published a book called Old Gods and the Cult of Yore in, 19, er, in, in 1051. He died about... He died four years ago from old age. Here is the here is the book he published. <sighs> At the time, it was very groundbreaking, but since then, it, his research has somewhat fallen out of favor. Uh, I realize I'm not there, but can I write down the book's name? Old Gods. Old Gods and the Cult of Yore. You say we'll say you come back from your hairball check during while he's uh, blowing dust in Nog's face. <laughs> and the Cult of Yore. The cult of my what? To, to clarify, political favor or factual favor? Receptive question. A little bit of both. Ah, here you go. Dog is not comfortable around vampires at the best of times. And this guy's got like very odd vibes. You guys are real cool. I may have to consider a career change. Ooh. Yeah, I so rarely meet people who are interested in archival studies. But you do need a tremendous tolerance for damp and darkness. Mm. Let's talk. Ooh. Dr. Midnight's going to give you his business card, mm. Enor. Maybe you're making a, I think you might be making a real connection here. A meat cute. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to shortcut you guys looking at microfiche for several hours oh, because you. that's oh, good. <laughs> my, mind numbing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nog goes and looks for, like, while they're doing it. Nog just starts looking for like old archival of uh, like the paper of like she- old Sheath Cliff. Oh, there's episodes. like there's lots or, of old Sheath Cliff yeah. comics. Is there a favorite favorite one that you find? <laughs> uh, yes, but it's uh, it's very reminiscent more of uh, the. The well-known other Ravnica comic, the close part <laughs> is the name of it, um, and uh, it's uh, it's just a it's a <laughs> there you go you got it it's a lock it's a loxodon in like a trench coat uh, and going up to an elf and being like Mister <laughs> Mister Bimblebop, remember me. West Silesnia, 1999. If you're going to kill me, you better make sure you do the real thing. Ah, uh, yes. A Loxodon never forgets. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you're going to Doomblade a man. Yeah. I've read like very little Heathcliff, but I've read a lot of Farside. <laughs> hmm. uh, well, They're both about cats. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> never mind. <laughs> All right, there. I I always was a favorite. I, uh, my personal favorite is that uh, close part comic where it's just like a um, a, a, a crasis staring at a bunch of things, and it just says crasis tools. Anyhow, you do not find anything that indicates that Gorev Bruno was on the Swamp Ball team mm. in your searches. However, you do find that in that in this that there in night in in. 
It's 10,043. We're just going to say 43. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In 43, there was an article about Dr. Probnos and the Ravdikin History Club going on the rubble belt on a field trip. You and then you go and then you can cross reference that with the Ravdikin History Club and in the school yearbook for 43. And it looks like there was 43, there was 40 members of the Ravdikin uh, History Club in that year. It was the Dr. Probnos was the faculty supervisor, and two notable members include one Gorev Bruna uh, and one Obort Zunek, uh, who is wearing who has his hair in a ponytail in this photo. And uh, it looks like there's a couple of references while you're looking there to uh, the bog mm -hmm. about how the university has uh, tried to uh, try tried to like purchase parts of it or something like that to try and like expand like put student housing there and and uh, and but Dr. Probnos lobbied several times to have it declared unfit for construction, uh, but that never happened. Hmm. Do we know why, or can we infer why? Uh, if we like, can I read his book? Yeah, you can read his book, and it's mostly about like gruel traditions and stuff mm. like that, and trial by combat, and mm. some some stories about Hans Rag and Ilharg and a bunch of other gruel gods, which I will not, um, you know, go into great detail about. Uh, but um, uh, it does just say that you know uh, gruel gods are rumored to still be around. And, uh, but, uh, you know, some of them may slumber deep with the deep w beneath the ground, uh, in places where there are a lot of magical energy. Uh, and if you are, this won't mean anything to you, but I assume this means to maybe something to you. Does this sound sort of familiar to you? This kind of attitude about summoning a yeah sleeping gruel god yeah yeah a little bit mm -hmm. yeah a little bit is there a i don't know a water deity that they they talk about at all uh not that you can see from this but huh. but you know it's all sorts of unexplored things and you know how that you know a lot of people it's a lot of thing mostly about like hey there's a lot of stuff we don't know about you know pre-guild packed history and the gruel uh, gruel oral tradition may be the only way to get this knowledge and just because they don't have a history of written knowledge doesn't mean that their culture and their knowledge should be discounted mm -hmm. uh, you know and uh, he, th they might be onto something but it's not maybe the most popular things most of the Ravnik and History Club is just like t talking about like you know post guild pack history which at this point is a lot of it and stuff like that mm -hmm. Um, you can see a little presentation that Bruna did on, uh, on, you know, the great building code reforms of, of, of 3058 or something like that. Right. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, can I pull anything from like their academic history? Thank you. I was just about to ask. Probably. What do you want? Anything that they would have had published and bound, mm -hmm. like things like their dissertations. Probnos? Or, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, you can see you can see that it's something about Ilharg. Okay. Hmm. And, and specifically, then... anything post forty two. Uh, well, for post forty two, his big big thing was uh, old gods and the cult of Yor. But he's he's published. He's pu he he talks uh, basically. He sort of investigates gruel legends of old gods and what they might mean because they're completely forgotten now. But he's written about uh, he's written about Ilharg. And Ansreg, which you know, Nog sounds a lot like this uh, this mole god that got loose and wrecked everything at the agency. And he also talked about a pale bear named Duskana, hmm. uh, who is said to to stalk the the you know the wilds and stuff like that. But no one's ever seen it and stuff and like all of these things and like uh, uh, pigs. How pigs are very very uh, important. He talked uh, about this. He's got a, a paper he published called. Big pig, bigger pig, <laughs> biggest pig. <laughs> Is that available in the archives? Yeah, you can you can read his his talking about all of the different pigs. Slock would like to read what was it? Big pig, bigger pig and biggest pig. I don't big know. Big pig, bigger pig and biggest pig. I'm trying to make the you know because there's big pig in like yes. Ravnica and then there was there's bigger pig. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. the fabled biggest pig is biggest. is it Ilharg? There's always a bigger pig, but what if there isn't? What if there is a biggest pig? Well, then we'll build a bigger pig. We're in trouble. Uh, that last one was big enough. Do you want to know anything else about Doctor Probnos? I mean, he's dead. He's been dead for about four years. Right. But um, his 
uh, you can you can find out that he still has a living widow in an old folks home not far from campus. That's kind of interesting. Um, mainly, I, I, I look to see if there's any indication of why he thought that the bog shouldn't be built on. Uh, he didn't think the bog should be built on because it was uh, overwhelm- it is overwhelmingly magical uh, and uh, highly unstable and dangerous and not a place that there's plenty of other things that could hmm. be torn down and rebuilt and leave it alone. Okay. 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 I can't think of anything else right now. I mean, unless there's like mention of Bruna in the book or of of Obort Zunak. Uh, there is no mention of Bruna, but Obort Zunak does get a uh, a shout out in the uh, special thanks section of Old Gods and the Cult of Yore mm-hmm. uh, as a former student and now junior Azorius whatever, because this would have been way back. This would have mm. been like 51. It's almost 80. This would be you know, 30 years ago, right. early in his career, and he came back to help proofread this book, apparently. You're getting the idea that this, that old Probnos may have been very influential on Obort Zunak in a way that few people noticed. And yeah. hopefully, maybe somebody would have noticed this a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Ah, Probnos never lived to see his student go absolutely bat bananas, which is probably good. Okay. Um, I can't think of what else to do right now. Oh, this is, I've here? literally written down. I've re- literally read you everything I had written down here. So nice. I feel Exhausted like... up the dialogue. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, if you try to talk no, to him Nog again. Nog is sleeping in the corner at this point. Yeah, <laughs> if you try to talk to him again, uh, I just midnight will just go into his idle animation and say, I think I've gotten you everything I can from the archives for today. I hear the king has a new advisor. Yes. <laughs> But uh, he will uh, he will contact you, Enor, if you're looking. You know, Enor, weren't you supposed to be doing some community service at some point? Community service is correct, yes. Yes, do you want to ask Midnight if you can do any community service here? Well, yeah, sure, why not? All right, yeah, all right. He'll, uh, he'll, uh, you can set that up with him, <laughs> and we'll go over what that entails later. <laughs> uh, Nog, you are woken up by a raven landing with Good. a thump on a skylight and as it, it devours a struggling frog <laughs> and the frog kind of like puts its hands and is like Aah! am i awake or is this still a nightmare <laughs> uh but yeah as you leave the goblin says bye it was so nice to see you guys we don't get we get so few visitors most people are just so off put you know because of all the abominations that were created here yeah i, I can't imagine why <laughs> Anyhow, come back anytime. Okay. I will never go back. It was dark and quiet. They had microfiche. <laughs> they don't have that these days. Wild. Everything's Top in... tier archival material. Everything's in scrolls now. It's... <laughs> All right. Uh, well, where to? The, um, I guess we're going to the morgue. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting your contact. All right, so you had public transit happens, uh, and uh, uh, you uh, arrive back in the second district mord, and as you arrive, good old Zoot Smack uh, uh, does not look up as you come in, but does clear his throat and say, "Ah, oh, more mail for you, snogalog log and another visitor. Would you uh, like me to bring you any furniture while you're here? Perhaps a potted plant for your desk? That sounds great, actually. Can you do that? Absolutely. Great. Not not petunias. I'm uh, I'm allergic. All right. Petunias it is. Mm. Mid-tier flower at best. No, see that's Amen the to that, brother. That's the trick cuz I know I he hates me and I like petunias. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. I, I will point out that this person had no personality. And I just said, "Nog, what are they like?" And then, you know, Nog told me that he doesn't like him and he, he always does not gets care his for me. He in my mind, he was a helper, but now, no, no helpers. Anyhow, you have a bunch of mail. Uh, you have... Uh, I'm so popular. You have... Uh, okay, so there's... You have a letter from Monic Shot. Oh. Oh, I should probably read this one first. Yeah, all right. Uh, it is... Uh, it's just a, a letter printed on just normal paper, and it is... Uh, and it is come in the envelope with this 
multi-page chemical analysis. Oh, right. And it's, uh, the letter says, Detective Naganog and investigatory friends, please find That's attach a complete spectrographic analysis of the water sample you provided. To put it in a nutshell, after filtering out the dog dander and other contaminants you introduced, it appears to be nothing more than natural spring water and is therefore completely safe. I wouldn't drink it, though, because the sample is also saturated with raw magical energy and should therefore be considered mildly explosive. This has been extremely helpful for my own, uh, for my own research as to what might be causing these... Uh, the uh, the earthquakes. So please let me know if you need anything else. Yours in progress, Monic Shot Zip Spigot. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess it's just regular water. Well, besides the magic and explosion. Uh, this you have. Enor has a letter here. No. <laughs> it, Did you set your forwarding email to my desk? I try to avoid all mail. Yeah. Well, this uh, th- maybe there's a reason it's come here because it says Enor, care of the agency detective Naganog. Oh. And it says, per the- I do care about you. Thank you. <laughs> per the terms of your release agreement, please report to your parole officer, Mr. Jaduit Zakany, on Selesny 16, 116, bracket, at 8.30 a.m. for your weekly check-in. Neutrally, the offices of the Historian <laughs> Senate, Prison Release and Rehabilitation Branch, 6th District Sub-Branch, Accidental and Nonviolent Crimes Division. I need to sign more emails like that. Neutrally. <laughs> Neutrally. Mm-hmm. Neutrally yours. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then uh, this one, uh, this one, uh, is uh, also for Nog, and this one is in a thick, high-quality envelope, and uh, when you open it up, it's on nice paper in fancy script. It says, To the most honorable junior detective Naganog of the Ravnican Agency of Magical Logical Investigations and his associates, Mr. Avenir Gobelin of the Azoria Senate, Mr. Slock of the 6th District Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. Enor, bracket, no known... Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, surname? Not surname. Uh, what's the word I'm looking Affiliation. for? Affiliation. Affiliation. No known affiliation and bracket. It is with great pleasure that we received your request from the agency to speak with the Society for Culinary Anachronism, and you are therefore cordial invite- cordially invited to attend our monthly luncheon gala held at 1 p.m. Uh, at 1 p.m. today, Selesny 15, at my residence. Several visiting dignitaries from Mossbauer University, bracket 5th District, will be in attendance, and we are all most looking forward to your presence. Yours in courtesy and excitement, Mrs. N- Mrs. Nithis Thune Skosman, chairperson, 6th District Society for Culinary Anachronism, 29 Sicilian Avenue. Just once I'd love to meet, like, a... Jane. <laughs> you met a Jimmy at the bar. <laughs> That's true. But, uh, and you asked him but, why his name was, wasn't weird. But that was because he was a throwaway character. <laughs> uh, great. Sounds like we got a hot uh, lunch date. All right. Bef- um, but there's somebody here that we need to talk to. Yes, yeah, she's in uh, room number one. Okay. Well, hey, thanks. Looking forward to that plant. Petunias, you said you were allergic to. Oh, just deathly allergic. Mm, excellent, yes. <laughs> I will. I will say, as somebody who does gardening, petunias are great. They're very easy to grow. Yeah, they do things. <laughs> They're nice. They come, they come easy, come easy to go. They look all right. All and right. No peonies. Yeah. Uh, so, in interview Except one, mm-hmm. you see a small, nervous-looking woman in a smart suit and matching hat. hat are very in style this season it seems. i've noticed that a lot of people are wearing fedoras lately yeah i mean i don't even know where Valencia I mean, you are got wearing hers a f- from. <laughs> oh wait i'm wearing one <laughs> maybe you take it off quickly uh and uh, so she's looking quite nervous and uh when you uh come in she stands up and she introduces herself as marlo fnut and uh, hands you a business card that says fnut for forensic accountants office 301 hovost plaza congruent street fourth precinct Forensic accountants, what is that? Oh, uh, if you are wondering about money, we can tell you where it came from, where it's going, and how it's being hidden to avoid paying taxes, or how to avoid paying taxes on it, depending on what you are asking for. Well, it is such a pleasure to meet you, Marlo. I'm Nog. These are my associates, Slock. Charmed. Avenir. Hi. And Enor. It's your boy. I've ne- I've never met a cat person before. 
They're talking oh. about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, well, um, I have to say, I, I was a little bit nervous about hiring a private detective but when i saw in the uh, in the in in the times picayune that the agency had been hired to do an investigation for the chamber of commerce uh that uh the, you, this was a reputable agency uh unlike other detectives that you know seem a little bit seedy um and so uh, i have um, a delicate matter that i would like you to investigate i have a cousin named uh veracity uh Fnute. Uh, and uh, she is now living with me because she's come to town. Her parents live uh, out in the Cardinia Mountains, and uh, she's studying at Capizza Dirac. And uh, her parents uh, wanted me to keep an eye on her. And I thought that would be completely unnecessary because she's an adult and she can make her own choices. Um, so I kind of ignored that. And now I'm feeling a bit bad about it because she's started to act odd. She's coming and going at late times. She appears to be hanging out with an interesting sort of people, and I just want to make sure everything is on the straight and narrow. I don't think that she's in, I don't necessarily think that she's in trouble, but I, I would like someone to follow her. Uh, I, I, uh, I looked in her room and there's strange posters on the war, on the wall for something called King's Icor and the War Boar. Uh, how, <laughs> how old are they? She's 18. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any chance they're just, you know, being a teenager? I mean, probably, but she's always been, you know, a fairly, you know, d normal kind of girl. And I found something weird in her room. And she hands you a crumpled poster. I feel so bad about going through her stuff, but I just wanted to know... You know what was going on and you know what but at this point this is going to be really familiar to all of y'all oh, this is the poster for that show that we're supposed to go to it's saturday at the factory benediction a great communion shall find you heralding oh. the greatest return at a fixed annual rate oh. canticle 102 saint insolence the saint insolence's the third's good book of ursary oh she's hanging out with those Religious so, folks. Sorry, Benediction 102? Canticle 102. Canticle 102. Hmm. Is that Ursh a new one? Ursary? It is. Ursary. Ursary is uh, lending money at at, oh. at an exorbitant rates. I thought it was like a bear. No. <laughs> I've, I've been bears. deep into the thesauruses to it's write where, all this. It's where bears are born. <laughs> the Ursary. <laughs> <laughs> why Duskana's getting up in people's grill there and wrecking the ursery. Um, so much chest hair on these babies. <laughs> uh, okay. 102. Okay. I don't know yeah. what it means. Um, well, do you know uh, where, where she's been going that we can follow her? No, but she said she's going out to tomorrow night. And so I was hoping that you could come around our house and that you could watch her and tail her for a bit as she leaves. Our address is number six, a blank terang muse, Cheshernia Street, 4th Precinct. Cheshernia. Cheshernia Street. Cheshernia? Yeah. Cheshire? Like Cheshire? Cheshernia. I see. Um... You, well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. That is that is right up my alley. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a rather large investigation. Uh. <laughs> well, you you did have a, a card on a message board that says that, that you were cooking for answers. <laughs> I, I I did have that, didn't I? Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure we could spare some time for a side quest. Yeah. Oh. Shasharin Yam Muse. <laughs> I've yeah. always wanted to invest. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't think we can do this? <laughs> I'm sure we can. I just didn't want to finish that sentence. Yeah. Okay, great. It's probably it's probably fine, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's no, certainly there's going to be nothing strange about four men following an 18 year old around. Mm -hmm. Well, you keep a low profile, obviously. Yes. Well, yes. Don't, absolutely. Um. 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I can't offer you much money, but uh, if you ever need the services of a forensic accountant, please let me know. Thank you so much, Detective Noggenog and Mr. Avenir and Mr. Slock and the good kitten Avenir. Or wait, Mr. Enor and the good kitten Avenir. And she gives you a pat on the head and she leaves. <laughs> Avenir purrs and doesn't know why. <laughs> like, He's so embarrassed. Do you, do you enjoy it more while you're in No. Capo? Okay. All right. Let's not dive no. into it. No. No. I think Avenir's had something awoken inside of him. Let me try something real quick. Uh-oh. Slock takes a little bit of string out of his pockets mm. and starts dangling it in front of Avenir. <laughs> Come on, just let it let it all Avenir out. Avenir has a rape here. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do, Step? Oh, that's a mighty high roll. <laughs> the string is gone. <laughs> oh. Would you, would you look at that? Are you eating the string? No. I'd like Baxter is just like, if there's string in the house, he just wants to eat it. So. I've seen what happens when that happens. Yeah, it's an $1,800 vet bill. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did she tell us when she's leaving tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, she's going. She's she says she's going out at about seven o'clock. Okay. Well, you know what? What are we doing Sorry. at seven o'clock tomorrow? Nothing. Nothing. So. Nothing. When was um? Let's earn some Xenos or some help. I mean, a forensic uh, accountant. Accountant seems mm. pretty relevant to what we're doing right now. When was Zossel's show? Uh, it he, wasn't tomorrow, right? It was. It was tomorrow. At seven? He, he, no, it was. At he like, didn't. He said it was just come down to the factory. It was one of those cool posters that doesn't tell you necessarily when or where you need to go. I it's just if these two story arcs are going to find themselves coming together. It's like kind of nine ish hmm. for like so, the opening bands. Yeah, but you know. But like the real bands don't show up until midnight. No, oh, you can wait. Well, I got to do this too on the you know to to pay the bills as well. That's true. Like on the, it, on, it's still my job, and on the off chance that I don't get to expense everything that you've been sending my way. <laughs> I haven't sent that much your way. <laughs> uh, hey, while you're thinking about things that you need to do tomorrow, does anybody want to make me a recalling things that Tizia has yelled about Slock for a <laughs> uh, Oh, that's a good one. What is that? Is that history? Sure. Uh, Tr- intelligence save, oh, I think, in- for remembering things. Oh, uh, 22. Oh, tomorrow is that big uh, Kapitza Dirac swamp ball game that you need to go out to because it's being put on by the Chamber of Commerce. In fact, you're all going to be required to go there to put in a good word. I'm not even with the Chamber. God, it's such a busy day. Like the campaign is rapidly spiraling to a close, or something I'm really like that. You know, I'm really looking forward to fighting this, so I can go back to being a slight introvert. I uh, I don't know. Have you ever watched Swamp Ball before? Uh, I used to way back in the day, but then they put in the five second rule. Well, if you don't see, you know, uh, you might feel like you're an introvert now, but after you watch somebody uh, get drowned in mm. real life, it might flip a switch, you know? Maybe. What is I'm, the five-second rule? Oh, the five-second rule um, is... Uh, so there's a tactic that you can do in Swamp Ball where you can, like, roll it through the, the water, I guess. Okay. Uh, towards somebody, but... Uh, if they don't pick it up within five seconds, uh, mm. it changes possession instantly. Oh, do you get a free hit on them as well? <laughs> uh, yeah, also you just get to sock them in the groin. Okay. Yeah. I would have assumed the five second rule was after someone goes limp. <laughs> you have to let them up after five <laughs> oh, seconds. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But no, I, yeah, that's good. Do you any any other interesting Swamp Ball rules that you dislike? Um, Perchance, mm, the, there was the "they who smelt it dealt it" rule. Yeah, how's what's that rule like? Um, People aren't allowed to fart in the swamp ball pool anymore. Oh, mm-hmm. is that difficult for you? It could be a technical foul. Whoa, used farting to, is used a technical. To be, well, back when the arenas were a lot smaller, okay, it's a very specific kind of stink in a swamp ball arena. Right, right, and. It's such that it's such a thick cloud of of stench that if an opposing stink hits that cloud, it p- 
pierces through. It upsets the pH balance mm-hmm. of the swamp. Yeah. Just it's just also kind of rude. You have a very fancy looking lunch appointment. Yes, we do. Perhaps we should to? go. We should go put on our our business finest. Yeah. Do you want? We should do, go dress up. You, I've got just up? the thing. What are you gonna do? Uh. Well, I'm going to save it for when we get to... Uh, <laughs> I, I think I need to use it right before we walk through the doors. Oh. Okay, perfect. All right, well, everybody, let's let's go change into our, 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 our formal best, and uh, let's, meet, let's meet at the location. Mm-hmm. Great. Going to bust out the Azorius robes and the, <laughs> the skull cap. Oh, it does, okay. But it doesn't go over your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Can you try to pull it down and the ears burst through <laughs> we have to pay for these <laughs> i pull the collared shirt red vest and uh, straw boater off of the carson d cackler uh, <laughs> animatronic and put that on all right well is, dressed oh is the azorius thing a skull cap or is it like a hood I always see it in the older like art. A hood. A hood? Because they've got like the huge cloak with the big broad collar. Yeah. And then it's usually just like, it looks like an astronaut like hood almost. Oh, like curious. it's a really like form fitting one. Yeah. I always thought it was just my skin. Yeah. I've seen Lavinia wearing them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, like old cards. I'm not sure. Yeah. That kind of thing. Only cloth. You know, you go, go with what, go with what you think your heart tells you is your mm-hmm. formal wear and then punch two holes in it for your ears. Uh, Valencia has a little uh, two-piece doggy suit. Oh, lovely! With uh, with cuffs, much like they are there. Uh, and Nog has just like this really nice, like form-fitting dress. Excellent. Are you so the the booty shorts are going away for this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Now I'm, I'm many costume changes today. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Basically, can you see? Um, uh, like uh, Lil Nas X wearing it. That's the Lil like, Nog X. Y- yeah, Lil Nog X wearing it like on, on like a Met Gala kind of thing. That's what he's got going Ooh, on. Ooh, very mm-hmm. fancy. Okay, everybody is dressed in their finest. Mm-hmm. Excellent, good. All right, so you head over. Um, you know this because I'm about to tell you this that Sicilian Avenue is in the t- is in the very fancy Aviara neighborhood, which is next to the Selesnia Verdani. The last time you were there, it was infested with yuppies. Uh, and you know what? It has, uh, it has only become more infested and richer over the past couple of years as what has happened to so many of the other charming six district neighborhoods of people uh, f- moving from the 10th to the 9th and from the 9th to the 8th and the blah, 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 and just down the chain and money coming in and stuff like that. Remember, we're entering high society, so we got to act high society. I've got just the thing to class us up. Perfect. Uh, Slock would like to eat the alter ego mushroom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Slock thinking that this will turn him into, um, oh, God, what's his name again? Culpability, Culpability Brown. Culpability Brown. No, unfortunately, that was the dead man's mask. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> well this this works. Slock <laughs> ate the wrong mushroom. Well. That's, that's fine. Uh, you have successfully eaten the wrong mushroom, though. Uh, the alter ego says that you have advantage on all roles that you don't have proficiency in and disadvantage on all roles that you do have proficiency in and believes they name is Blorb. Blorb? <laughs> Blorb. Has anything changed, like, physically or anything? Uh, I think this is more of a psychological effect. Okay. Uh, am, am I supposed to see something? I don't know. It's... Slock, you look exactly the same. Yeah? You think I look the same, do I? And who's this Slock character, see? It. Okay. It's Blorb, damn it, Blorb. <laughs> we need to, we need to have like an intervention about these mushrooms. I hope it's the mu- I mean he might be trying something on. Let him cook. You know? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> that's that's a very good point, you know. Yeah, I nog. I don't I don't, I don't I don't know if my voice is gonna <clears throat> Yeah, let me let me cook, Nog. <laughs> Did you say yeah, Nog, or yeah, Nog? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was saying yeah, Nog, but it probably came out like yeah. We have to, we have to enter high society, so. <clears throat> Bloop, whatever you would like to call yourself, that is within your rights. You're goddamn right, see? Now, oh, perfect. 
Well, shall we enter high society? Let's blorb the roof off this mother. <laughs> oh, God, he's got a catchphrase. Are, are we putting on ears now? Cool. <coughs> Put it, putting on ears? <laughs> Dude, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything I could have hoped for. Zoinks, that's a great voice. I know. I'll be able to sneak right in. No one will know a thing. Mom, call Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you travel to your destination, you walk down beautiful, wide, fancily brick-paved roads, and they're lined with these charming six-story stall apartment buildings, and each one is slightly different, but they're all rendered in the same kind of clean white brick, and occasionally adorned with arches and columns. If you on Ravnica had any concept of what Georgian architecture was, this is what it would be. Uh, uh, the, the sidewalks all mound slightly here because every 20 feet or so there's a beautiful, huge, mature, deciduous tree, and most of them are still bare, just have a few buds coming out of them, but some of them do have beautiful spring flowers that are starting to bloom. People in fashionable looking coats, and yet more hats are popping in and out of bakeries and cafes all around here, carrying things like baguettes and magazines, and it's all very fancy and, and rich. And then you sort of walk through this neighborhood and you come to number 29, which is a townhouse and it has, you know, just a little tiny like thin strip of fenced garden in front of it, but and wide stone steps that lead up to a dark ancient wooden door which is manned by an impeccably mannered butler. And she looks at you and says, Hello, welcome to the Society for Create for Culinary Anachronism. May I have your names? Why, yes, you may. But uh, surely you know who we are by us just approaching you. We are nothing if not important members of high society. Hmm. Yes, we do entertain only the most important and conservationally minded members of high society here, but I do have to check off my guest list because this is a strictly invite only. Although I can see from your agency bag badge that you are likely Detective Noggenog. Ah, see, I knew they knew who I was. Excellent. And I am to presume that one of you is a Mr. Enor. I'll write Enor in a card and hand it to her. Thank you. I'm looking for uh, an Avenir of the Azoria Senate. Present. Cat person. Interesting. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, one Mr. Slock from the Chamber of Commerce. No, that's old news, see? I go by <laughs> Blorb. Blorb? Blorb. Oh, Blorb. <laughs> now, nah, that's old news, see? I go by Blorb now, see? Oh, oh, okay. Well, you are all invited here, so I'll just I'll just write Blorb and uh, I'll yeah, just... Capital uh, B is lower See that you do. Excellent. And she hands you all some little name tags that you can put on for this little mixer and says, Welcome to the Society for Culinary Anachronism. You may leave your coats and any other uh, carried items in the downstairs reading room. The party is being held in the first floor reception room, just up the first set of stairs. Very good. Open the door for us. There you go, sirs. Thank you. Ring a ding ding. <laughs> Sweet pad. Uh, it is a beautiful. It is a, This is a fancy, rich person townhouse, mm -hmm. uh, which it we've is, been in several times. Yeah, this is unlike a lot of people's houses, which are like you know you might have two floors out of a something like that. This is all six floors belong to this place. These people six are rich. Think of this is like a brownstone. Is there an elevator? No. Regardless of what anyone else does, Enor has taken off his shoes. A Don't Golgari know. brownstone? It's a magic card. I was, I was, uh, I mean, that was not the reference I was making. I was like, you know, like the New York I know, brownstones yeah, yeah, on like yeah, the upper, like yeah. the rich people live I in? Like your, that, imagine that. Okay, so do you want to look around anything on the first floor or just ditch your coats and shoes, I guess, in Enor's case? Uh, I'm not wearing a coat. Okay. I'm fabulous. And uh, the coat is part of Valencia's outfit. <laughs> outfit. All right. Uh, Avenir docks his his cloak but he just like backs up unfastens it and then walks out of it <laughs> right it holds yeah, yeah, it holds shape. Shape. yeah. Oh, perfect. God. it's just like it's vaguely bell shaped with like an enormous collar that he can kind of peek out of oh wonderful uh blorb what do you do uh blorb stashes his 
backpack filled with mushrooms, like kind of in the corner where nobody's going to steal it. Right. No one's going to steal anything here anyhow, mm-hmm. but I appreciate the instincts. Uh, you know. <laughs> um, do you want to take any of those mushrooms? Or are you good with the one you've taken? No. Uh, well, Blorb has grabbed two mushrooms. Wonderful. Uh, not sure which ones. Uh, but just in case he needs to level okay, up. Okay, so there are two of your mystery mushrooms? Uh, yeah. This will go well. I have a total of seven different mushrooms in my uh, bag. Okay. I sent you the list of what you had in there, so now I'm just pulling it up because I kind of want to get you to roll on what that is. <laughs> the oil. Now- I. I too would like to do that. Okay. I would like to do it before I, <laughs> or right as I'm doing it. Okay, let's get you, let's resolve this now. So uh, what are you trying to grab from here? Uh, trying to grab the indigo milk cap and the cremolata. And the cremolata? Okay, yeah. so now hold up. I've got a, so I'd like you to make me an int roll here. But oh, according geez. according to this, you have disadvantage on all roles that you have proficiency in. Um, and are you proficient in nature, perhaps? I believe so. Normally? Uh, well, I would, have a I would hope so as a druid. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so now you have disadvantage. So I would like you to make me a roll on this with disadvantage to correctly identify and grab the two mushrooms that you are wishing for, which is the milk cap and the weep cap, right? Or no, the cremolata and the weep cap. Uh, 14. Well, you 14? roll twice, now and then you take the lower, lower one. Lower roll. Blorb is not good with mushrooms. Blorb is... 16. 16. All right, Damn. 14. That's pretty good. Okay, so you want the cremolata and the... Weep cap. The weep cap. Okay. I'm going to say that on a 14, you can remember which one those are, and you can take them. Nice. Uh, do you want to eat either of them? Mm, not yet. I'm going to ride this one out for a little bit longer. Okay, sounds good. All right, so... Uh, b- uh, Blorb has grabbed their mushrooms, uh, and you uh, leave, I assume? Yeah, we started heading towards the party. All right. You go up some wooden stairs and that are carpeted Ugh. in a plush, creamy runner. Stairs. And another servant wordlessly sort of, as you pass them on the stairs, they nod at you very politely and, and sort of wave like, oh, it's this way, sirs, you know, welcome. Uh, and uh, you uh, find yourself in the reception room, which is sort of a wainscoting and fiddly crown molding affair with dark carpets, plush furniture, large windows that look out upon the townhouse's private back garden, which is narrow, but it's almost a hundred feet long and it's filled with food crops it's filled with herbs and fruit trees and there's a pond with uh, at the end and it's got a little fountain in it it's, it's gorgeous and it clearly is, is a cultivated garden for growing food rather than a looking at garden a little bit there's also a buffet table that is groaning with what all of you recognize and avoid as modern sensible ravnican citizens as traditional ravnican food there's lockwurst, bindle leg, crovod tripe jelly, jellied zeppelid, or sorry, that's crovod tripe jerky, jellied zeppelid, potted grazer tail, laver bread, oh. tooth sausage, boiled notarog, crunch snout fricassee, trigon fin fingers. I can't go on. Oh man, these old dudes always put way too much cinnamon in everything. Yeah. There is a, there's also sort of the centerpiece of this traditional Ravidican food display is some sort of monkey type creature uh, that's been roasted whole with an apple in its mouth. Ah. <laughs> and uh, an arbor. What is it? Arbor. Arboreal grazer. An arboreal grazer. I did ask several weeks ago what everyone's favorite Ravidican creature was for this purpose. So you cooked it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Mm. Perhaps I will make my way straight to the grazer. I'd like I'd like a nibble of the monkey. All right, there's somebody doing monkey carvery there. Mm. I think I'm gonna. Oh, cha cha! I think I got a hairball. I'm about to cough up. Perhaps oh. some of the tail, if you would. All right, they give you some uh, potted grazer tail, which mm. is like I don't know. It's it's like tail that's been put in like uh like a pot pie and it's got like topped with pastry and they can serve you some of that. Oh man, it's been roasted. Give me that monkey titty. Uh, the tail, tail. Tail. Sure, the tail. Sure. All right. Uh, so are you? So you are eating the traditional Ravnican food. I mean, I was looking for something a little bit more marbled with fat, but sure. 
Uh, there is some white sausage here. <laughs> Ian, do what? you know what that is in real life? Yep. Yeah. What is white sausage? Okay, so in real Why life... Why am I doing your voice? <laughs> I lost it. So in real life, we've all heard of blood pudding or mm-hmm. black black mm-hmm. sausage. Mm-hmm. What, and they that's dark because they put blood in it. White is the opposite. It's light because it's just fat. Mm. It's pork fat yeah. sausage. That sounds That sounds great. It's, they serve it in very thin slices, from what I can tell. Guess I'm... whose culture's food I looked up for this. <laughs> well, I... So, yeah. Yeah. so you're eating all of their traditional food. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm having some. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm excellent. Nibbling. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, there's also a bunch of people here. There's about 15 other people here. There's some of the members of the SCA, and there's some younger folks who are just gorging themselves on the food, mm. and a sh- very short, middle-aged human lady. She has a stocky build and some gnarly-looking cauliflower ear. Now, I would say slock. You would have some context for who these people might be, but this is Blorb, so Blorb... Uh, uh, <laughs> Can you make me a disadvantage roll to... So that's roll twice, take the lower number to figure out who these people might be. Fifteen. Nine. Nine. Wow, they look like athletes. Holy smokes, check out the legs on those folks. They must run real fast. Uh, Or swim. What? (laughs) Uh, Do you want to talk to any of them? Or do you want to try to find Nithis Thun Skosman? Do I recognize? Them? Do we recognize them? Are they the Are they the kids? Uh, no. These oh. are. This is. Uh, this. You know what? While you're looking around and trying to, you know, Nithis Thun Skosman is so excited to have a member of the Ravnican Magicological Investigations, whatever it's called here. The agency. The agency. She's going to come up to you and she's going to go, "Hello." Do we do you remember me from episode one? Yes. <laughs> I sure do. Yes, hello. Welcome, welcome. I'm so I'm so honored to oh, host. I'm so honored. I'm so oh, oh, you do see you know what? I thought that we had met briefly at the uh, luncheon gala for Obot Zunak Day. Oh, that old fossil. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, did you happen to enjoy any of the hors d'oeuvres that we had catered for that party? Uh, I, I did partake in quite a number of things at the buffet table. Oh, at the buffet. But did you have any of the hors d'oeuvres that were being passed around on the trays? That was all from us at the Society for Society for Culinary Anachronism. I do happen to remember eating a sausage extruded from my friend's palms. Oh, a traditional Golgari presentation. Are you from the Golgari? That's uh, right. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yes. Born yes. and raised, see? Oh, wonderful. Well, now, you requested that you wish to speak to me, and I would be honored to do anything I could do for the Ravnican Agency of Magicological Investigations. I've heard they are, the organization is making quite a splash in the 10th District. Very true. We do tend to get wet a lot. What? <laughs> we, I mean, he's not wrong. No, I didn't hear what he said. <laughs> we get wet a lot. Oh, we get wet a lot. Okay. Why, yes, we have several questions we'd like to ask if if you've got the time. Oh, I always have the time for that. We were originally just going to be doing a party for Coach Scrungula and several members of the Moss Bower Swamp Ball team in anticipation of their uh, their exhibition match tomorrow. And oh. But it's just such a coup to have both groups here at once for our presentation. Yes, well... Avenir. <laughs> I don't recall you having cat ears. They're new. He's trying something. I think it's a wonderful look on you. Follow your dreams. Thank you. <laughs> Do you need to make a hairball check? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, God. Okay, you, ten. Uh, you got a plus two. Okay, twelve. Yeah, you, you can... Take that one back down. Where but, is it coming from? But maybe you make a little. Co- yeah. <laughs> maybe, do you make a little noise, just very qu- uh, under your breath? Maybe. I. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Okay. While you're that. meeting this person. Pleasure. <laughs> oh. 
horrifying. <laughs> um, did you say that the uh, there's another Swamp Ball team here? Yes, yes, yes. This is the Moss Bowler University team from the 5th District. They're here because they're doing an exhibition match against the Kapitza Dirac team at the Deck Butt Swamp Ball Arena tomorrow. Sorry, what is the university's name? Moss, Moss Bauer Moss University. Bauer. What what was the other word? The Derek Butt. Derek Butts. The Derek. You know, the Derek Butts drowners. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, the Derek Butts drowners. <laughs> drowners. Ah, a, yes, uh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, were you a fan of the Derek Butts drowners? Matter of fact, uh I used to Oh wait. You, I used to No, you're Blorb. Blorb uh, didn't play with them. Uh, <laughs> Blorb is grasping at his head. Slock's voice is starting to come through. Oh, are you all right, sir? Can can I get you some, perhaps some jellied eels? Nog, no. Nog, Nog does that thing where he like pinches behind like Slock's elbow. <laughs> you are a burst, I guess. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, do you have any mushrooms? Oh, we have a variety of mushrooms. Uh, we have something called witch's fingers here typically they're not grown anymore because people say that they're poisonous but i think that once you've eaten them enough two of them please i'll take two of them there you go Uh, blorb eats two of these mushrooms they're just they're just like there's a reason people don't grow these kinds of crops anymore is they're bad but they're traditional (laughs) (laughs) they taste bad and have little nutritional value in fact outside of character this is the thing that the center for experimental mycology has been trying to breed out of ravnican food stock for thousands of years for hundreds of years because they're crap oh, you can really taste the bitterance yeah. oh. <laughs> don't they have a unique and acquired taste definitely acquired yeah <sighs> i'm looking forward to ever acquiring it oh well, you'll have to come back to some of our bi-weekly Saturday dinners. Do they follow a seasonal theme? Oh, like every two weeks. Every two weeks. Okay, I was like, there's two Saturdays? <laughs> well, technically there's four <laughs> or five. <laughs> Do you have anything specific that you want to ask Nithis Thune Scosman? She's just Cards so... on the table. I forgot why we're here. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm curious about what the relationship is with After Sausage. Oh, okay. You can just ask that. Yeah. Uh, the cards on the table, why you are here is because Proclia said that Prian has been taking these people around the mm. After Sausage right. warehouse yeah. and took his dad to one of their meeting, yes. one of their big dinners. Yeah, it's kind Perfect. of like... And Thank Proclia you. Uh, thinks this is suspicious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can just shortcut all of that and she will talk about that yes mr spazabom oh such a tragic loss and to perish under mysterious circumstances that's not her being weird nobody knows what happened Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh very tight-lipped about it avenir's boss has made sure no one knows anything Mm-hmm. Um and uh, yes, it would and we had just seen him. My goodness, he was so stressful to have him, but he but Brian, he is of course a member of our organization, did say that coming out to the dinners and and seeing people who were appreciative of his work and of after sausage was lifting his spirits, which seems I will, I will just simply say that I will take Brian's word for it. Mr. Spazabon was an interesting fellow. Did you find him difficult to get along with? Just between us, he had very... Everybody's got their ears in a line. <laughs> yes. He, he was a very difficult person. He had, we'll say... Poor manners. Uh, Brian was started. Brian was saying that he had to come here to our bi-weekly dinners, and you know I want to help him because you know after sausage, all of the things that had happened were so terrible to him with the the divorce and then the losing his business after that, and you know he'd never been a nice person, but it had really taken a toll on him. But the last time he was here on the second of Selesny, he ate three cakes and he drank two bottles of cooking wine we did offer him some very fine sauvignon from the seventh district but he wouldn't touch it would you like wine by the way oh of course oh millicent 
and then wine is going to be brought around from you. Uh, yes, second he... of Selesny. How long ago was that? Oh, that was well. Today is the fifteenth, so that okay. was that was uh, uh, thirteen days ago. Yes. Right. Okay. So we're having our next bi-weekly dinner uh, tonight or tomorrow, which is what he was. You know, Brian was so keen that he was would be coming out to that one. He said it was very important that his father get out of the warehouse and you know experience a change of scenery mm. and you know try to be a little bit more social but realistically it was very difficult to to get along with him because he was ill-tempered and he had very little taste for savory foods but he would just he just loved sweets as i said he ate three cakes when he was here it was incredible what kind of cakes? Ah, uh, he they were they were chocolate cakes and uh, um, um, chocolate cake, carrot cake, vanilla slice, but Ravnik and okay. so yeah, so just cakes in general. Like had a real sweet tooth. That's terrible. That seems. He, I know he yeah. didn't. He did not have any of the jellied crowvod hoof that we had prepared specially for the dinner. We thought Imagine. it would pair very well with the flavor palette of after sausage. What seemed to make him so upset? That was just, just you know, lack divorce, of money, money, divorce, being kind of an unpleasant person, even by aristocratic standards. Hmm. Did he speak to anyone for any length of time? Ah, I mean, he spoke, everyone tried to speak with him, thinking, oh, poor Herobian, like, maybe we can bring him out of his shell. But he was generally fairly short with people, but Brian insisted that he had to come back saying it was really making a difference. And if mm. that's making a difference, then I was keen to help because if that was a positive change, my God, oh, mm. I mean, hmm, everyone encounters difficulties and we must be diplomatic. Have you spoken to Brian since? Well, yes, Brian was invited to our, uh, our, our bi-weekly dinner tomorrow night, but he's uh, uh, opted not to come as he's fairly depressed about the untimely death of his father. And he was supposed to be here today, but he's also canceled that appointment as well. Hmm. You have a lot of dinners <laughs> together. We're trying... Do you eat at home ever? Well, this is my home and oh. we're trying, and I grow many of the herbs and vegetables here, many of them outlawed by the Azoria Senate for being lightly poisonous unless prepared correctly here in my own garden because I wish to promote traditional, traditional Ravnican cuisine. I feel it is a dying art, especially with those new sausage standards that have come in. You can't get good lockwurst or two sausage to save your life nowadays. Uh... Yeah, well, that, that is what it is. Um, <laughs> I'm more curious I about agree. the hooves. Did Mr. Spazbaum ever talk to you about his interest in selling the, 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 the factory or anything in that realm? Oh, no, no, no. Did Prian ever mention it? Oh, Prian did mention uh, that, uh, that the, the Chamber of Commerce was interested in the land because they wished to develop the bog. And I think that is just a terrible idea. Did you know that many of the meats that we are serving here today were caught in the bog? There's the hooves. <sighs> really? Yes. It is an untapped culinary resource. That was what the hors d'oeuvres that we were serving that were going around at that lovely luncheon gala. Oh, very local. Very local. The ones that Pove ate. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, the, she's the, uh, the, what position does she play? Do we know? She's the drowner, I think. Drowner, yeah. She's the Kapitza Direct's uh, Swamp Ball Drowner. Oh, good. I'm glad she ate some. I'm sure that would give her pep and vigor. As you can see, the Moss Bow team are just going ham. <laughs> I look over at the Moss Bow team. Well, I mean, that's teenagers. <laughs> um, <laughs> Athlete teenagers. Yeah. Mm. I'm surprised their coach is letting them eat anything that has food. Oh, um, I'm sure they're carb loading. Mm. You can go talk to their coach after you're done here, if you'd like. Sure. Um, I'm just trying to think of, like, how this date lines up. When did... 
I think back, like, when were Proclea's meetings? Or when was Proclea showing up? Because we know, like, she was having weekly meetings. She was having weekly meetings with the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Right. And we know that Brian was here on the 2nd, and mm -hmm. he was supposed to be uh, with his dad. And he was supposed to be here with his dad on the 16th, and he was supposed to be here today. Probably his dad wasn't supposed to be. She'll say that, that Herobium is not invited to this. Uh, but he's obviously canceled his appointments on account of he's sad. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what Nithis is going to say to you. I mean, that's reasonable. I don't think I'd want to go to a meeting after my one of my parents died. No, no. Or at, to sounds... a polite society luncheon. Yeah, that sounds arduous. We started taking him, you know, a few months ago, about four months ago, and he came to one dinner and then another dinner. And, and Brian did say that it was making a difference. And recently he said that he'd like him to come to the bi-weekly dinners. Oh, and did anyone ever use after sausage? Oh, we do drink after sausage here, yes. Oh, really? It, yes. Do you find it, it useful? Yes, I do find it settles the stomach somewhat. Hmm. And the terroir <laughs> cannot be replicated. <laughs> hmm. If we had to describe after sausage in real world, ter real world terms, it tastes like malort. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Has anybody here ever had Malort? Yes. I've heard it tastes like um, uh, absinthe that somebody has completely ruined. Like, have you had Fernet Branca? No. Yes. Yeah, it's I kind of in the on. same wheelhouse. I was expecting that after such would be something like a uh, like a, an Unterberg, sort of a, a medicinal thing that comes in a paper bag with a bottle in it that's used for uh, digestive afterwards, but I very similar to yeah, uh, yeah. Malort. That was like chunky Pepto Bismo. <laughs> I kind of got like a Yag vibe from it. It's like yeah, very similar to that. As well. It's like okay. Yag, but it's worse. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's like bog yag. <laughs> but I'm guessing just as dark. So that's what my lord. Yeah. Bog okay, yager yeah. bombs. <laughs> yager bog. Bogger bombs. Uh, terrific. Is there anything else I can do for you? Would you like any more of the food? No, I think I've consumed enough monkey bottom for today. Wouldn't want it to go straight to my bottom, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Perhaps we'll go strike up a conversation with the Swamp Ball kids. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure they'll be so interested to meet you. Thank you so much. And may I say, it is so wonderful to have somebody from the Ravnican Agency of Magicological Investigations here with the SCA. And she's just going to have somebody come in and take your picture uh, of you, two of you together. And somebody's going to chunk. And then, you know, you're both looking very polite and stuff like that. Mm. It's so nice to know that such a prestigious organization believes in and supports the cause of traditional Ravnican food. Well, I mean, if there's one thing I can say, it's that I like eating. And that you speak for the Ravnican Agency of Magicological Investigations. Ah, no. <laughs> She's already off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's already left. She's, she's left. She's gone okay. to glad hand with other people. Oh, there are man. other members of the SCA here that don't have character art. There's the Swamp Ball team that doesn't have character art, but there's no reason to not interact with people. I'll go over to the other Swamp Ball team and just kind of like ask them what the reputation is of the Kapitza Dirac team. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, I assume you want to talk to their coach? Yeah. All right. So the coach is that lady who's short and has cauliflower ear and a sturdy mm. physique. Uh, this is Coach Scrungula of Mossbauer University. And uh, she's going to say, hey, how's it going? Uh, going well, actually. Um, I this is a weird myself. food thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's deeply mucilaginous. This is um, not the kind of food that we nice riz. eat in the fifth <laughs> district. Is this... So I have never, I, it's kind of weird, I've never been to the 6th District. I didn't really think there was a reason to go, and, well, maybe I wasn't so wrong. Is this all the food you eat around here? No, no, this is deeply bizarre. Okay, cool, cool. But, you know, they invited us here. They said it was, you know, to welcome to the 6th District. And, ah, that guy that you're with over there, the big one, he looks like he plays Swamp Fall, so you're going to be familiar with how much food the, def the offensive line needs to eat. So I figured, eh, we're going to, I'll bring these five here and we'll save on our budget a bit because we're saving for new uniforms next year. Yeah, no, it sounds like a great deal. Free um, food. 
Free food, exactly. So you're playing an exhibition match against the Kapitza Dirac Swamp Ball team? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Sorry, what is their name? That's just the Kapitza Dirac okay. Swamp Ball team. You were correct. Um, yeah, tomorrow. Wh- what's their reputation like? Uh, fearsome. Really? Oh, but I think we're fine. I think we're fine. We've been doing a lot of drills and practicing. We're really coming together because as a cohesive unit. Good, but good. Uh, I've heard that they're a real force to be reckoned with. Uh, oh. The uh, the 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 their lead, their star player there. There's a name of Pova. Used to play with the Mazgaz team, and they are a, they're a good team, a real good team. Yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting her a couple of weeks ago. She seems uh, like a like a force of nature. Yeah, she's a completely different person once the when she gets into the Swamp Ball arena. Outside, she's quiet, she's sweet, she's just a little cutie pie, but when she gets in the water, you just see the veil come over down the eyes, and it's all red mist and murder. It's fantastic. Oh, so you have met her before, then? Well, I've heard about her. I've okay. seen her games and stuff, but we've never played them before. I think this is going to be real educational for us, but I think we, we stand half a chance. I'm feeling confident. Okay. These kids are carbo-loving like crazy. They're going to have so much energy tomorrow. Where are you playing? The Dirk Butt Swamp Ball Arena. It's some sort of like family fun day that the Chamber of Commerce has organized. Well, hopefully we'll be able to see you there. Um, Absolutely. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I shake her hand. <laughs> she shakes your hand, but she realizes it's kind of a paw and it kind of looks at it funny, but doesn't say anything because she is in polite company. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, there's also five other uh, Swamp Ball players here. Mm-hmm. There's a medium-sized Viachino. There's a pair of smaller uh, goblin twins. There's a there's a small human, like not a big human, but a fairly small human, and a huge ogre. Talk to the goblin twins. All right, the go- <laughs> uh, the uh, the goblin twins are Mugrina and Pix. Mugrina and Pix. And and they're <laughs> hey, what's up, man? You look like you play swamp ball. Well, am I? I'm st- I'm blorb. You're still bored. Uh, yeah, see, so used to play a lot back in uh, my college days, but now uh, I'm all washed up. But uh, I know a thing or two about carbo loading uh, for the games. Oh yeah, yeah. This is weird. This is weird as hell food, but you know what? It's free. Yeah, what you eating? Oh, I'm eating some of this. Uh, some of these. Uh, what are they called? What are they called? Hey, what are these things called? And they look around. And where's my list of horrible things I invented? Uh, oh, yeah, these are Zeppelin pods. Zeppelins, huh? I'm trying to remember what I saw, what Pova was eating at the event. Similar looking canapes. Mm, yeah, the canopy. Yeah. yeah, because they made her violently ill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I, I won't interrupt. This is your conversation. <laughs> cool. Do you want some of these cool. pods, man? They kind of go squish in your mouth. No, I'm I'm good on pods, see? All right. They're going to keep eating. Do you want to talk to anybody I'm else? I'm all potted out. Um, I kind of want to look in the garden. Oh, sure. All right. Uh, you can let yourself out and look in the garden. What would you like to look for? Or do you just want to look around? Well, I don't have the best, uh, like, eye for plants i mean i have something of an eye for plants you, you would did. you did yeah. but right now you don't <laughs> not right now blurb does not <sighs> would enor be able to i don't know yeah do do you, I got something poisonous in here assistance yeah see i <laughs> something's not right with my brain right now but uh i uh enor knows things about nature yeah i know a thing or two but I got a real interest in some of the ingredients that's getting grown around here, see? Mm. Anything uh, Anything you're familiar with here? Uh, make me a nature check. Thank you. I was just about to ask if you wanted to roll or not. Ooh, that's good. Uh, da, 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 da. Give it 21. 21. Okay, Enor, yes. you're going to recognize these as the kind of... In our world, we would call them heirloom crops. Mm. Uh, so these are all like kind of like the things that they don't grow anymore because we have better versions mm-hmm. of them now. Uh, so they have things, uh, they have something called, uh, Innsbury Chuff. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're scraping them in the bottom of the barrel here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically they're all sorts of like lightly edible foods that mm. people in Ravnica's days of yore, in the early days of the guild pack would have been grown and forced to eat because that's what they had. 
days Dude, of my what? Nobody eats any of this anymore. This is all old people food. Any of these they don't eat anymore because of poison? I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of the people were old and died, but... You're not... Did... Did we get a, um, like, a blood or, like, a... Were they able to ascertain what was the cause of the poison in, for him? In Spazabom? In Spazabom. Uh I will tell you right now that they could not ascertain what the cause of the poison was, but every one of these is a known Ravnican species, so it's none of this stuff. Okay. This is all weird crap that nobody wants to eat unless they're doing so, unless you're some sort of culinary Damn. anachronist. Damn. Uh, but this is not... Yeah. It was a good thought. Poison. Right. So it was a good thought. Just culinarily criminal, not actually criminal. Yeah, there's a reason most of this food's fallen out of favor. But, you know, rich people with too much money and who like going hunting for exotic meats. We didn't ask her about the bog, see? Mm. Hey, we didn't ask back. her about the bog. You can go back and ask her about the bog. We should go back and ask her about the bog. What do you mean about the bog? Well, I mean, she's got an invested interest in the bog, right? Well, we talked to her about the bog. About how she... How does she feel about the bog getting? We, she, we literally she 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 quite literally said it was it was a bad thing and that okay. most of the all the food was from the bog, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of the meat was from the bog. Yeah, meat's sure. From the yeah. bog. The, okay. the a lot of the vegetables and other yeah. like sundry ingredients are from this garden. Yeah, she is vehemently so, anti so bog all, teardown. Only the meat is from the bog. Yes. Okay. How much meat have you all eaten? Zero. Zero I've eaten meat? a lot of monkey tail. Just a slice monkey of my monkey tail? butt. How much have you eaten, Avenir? Uh, more than Avenir normally would. Okay. It's just, just looking uh, better because you're a cat right now? Yeah. For some reason, this cat mushroom is lasting so much longer for you than it did for everyone else. I no, can't that seems about why. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going through that thing actually made the the, the food more, the, that cat boy cookie more strong. Hmm. That, uh, that tunnel that you had to pass through. Well, maybe... This is just forever. Yeah, Maybe this yeah, is forever. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, can can anyone here detect magic? Just uh, you? I can. I oh. unfortunately can't. I have that. All right. Uh, would you like to roll? To, to, to... Yes, I would like to cast detect magic. All right. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit like there's a magic pump that's making this fountain go there's your standard magical kitchen and uh, devices you know the magic that powers the lights and the air conditioning and stuff like that but nothing like wild anything out in the garden specifically uh, not really like a sprinkler control system okay so yeah how does cooking affect magical items uh this might be a question for slock can we we can say blorb is starting to wear off now <laughs> Blorb, before you go, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that you're a handsome boy. Thank you. I'll see you on the other side. Oh. All of your, all you now no longer have advantage on things that you would normally have disadvantage on, and you now lo no longer have disadvantage on things that you would normally have advantage on. Jeez. How are you feeling, Blorb? Uh, uh, who? What? My head is killing me. I'll miss him. Do I take any of those mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> take any, wait. Well, because you pulled out those two other mushrooms from your bag. Yeah. The cremolata and the Kelmarian weep cap. I need to pick me up one second. I feel I'm, there, something's not right. Is there anything that you would like to do? Would you rather take one or the other? I'd rather take the cremolata. Okay. The cremolata not are, knowing what it does. are indistinct brown balls that look like normal mushrooms. And this one tastes a bit like honey. If honey wasn't sweet, you gain 1d4 HP. <sighs> Neat. Huh. That one was safe. Um, Cremolata mushrooms are really neat. They taste a lot like honey meat. Is there anything else? What were we? Um, Why are we here? Yeah. <laughs> well, you were meeting with the, the Society for Culinary Anachronism to find out what the hell was going on with Prian, and and yeah. and she told you that Prian's been forcing his dad to come to meetings every once in a while. Y you know what you should do mm -hmm. is uh, do you want to do do you want to go back to your HQ so you. Have Zoot Snort or whatever I named him as your petunias that you're supposedly super allergic to and maybe 
have a little chitty chat about what's going on? Sure. Sure. Yeah. We, yeah. Should re- we should, we should, we <laughs> should. I, I find where I parked my coat yeah. <laughs> and back into it. <laughs> We go back to the morgue, to the temporary office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's set up a cork board. All right. So you get to the morgue and you see that Vogos and Chesha are no longer there. But you see that they have clearly, they have found more interesting things to do than the 5th District and the Swamp Ball team because there's souvenirs on a bag. You think that they're just out shopping and having a nice time. Mm. There's a big bag of red twine. Ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, some apple candy and uh, postcards uh, featuring Casina Park and uh, the Senza Under River, uh, which all of you know is probably the most distinctive architectural features that the Sixth District has. Okay. And there's a little poster of the proposed rendering of the new Swamp Ball. That's arena. all extremely handy. Yeah. Okay. New Swamp Ball thing. Yes. Perfect. Um, put up and a-, a big bag of red yarn because I figured nice. you'd want one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. We have Herobian Spuzz Bomb's murder. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have people who benefit from it and people who are harmed by it. Mm -hmm. I used to think that um, uh, Gorev seemed like the person who benefited the most from it. But if he and your friend, his secretary, and his daughter are telling the truth, which, I mean, like Gorev and um, uh, Proclia could be conspiring but it seems unlikely that then the secretary would also be able to corroborate those meetings mm-hmm. right um so we've got proclia prion gorev um who else seems like players who else seems like people who would benefit from or conspire to kill herobian the son or the daughter really i mean yeah Brian or Broccoli, like they, either either or really, because mm-hmm. if if the factory was gonna be sold, if it were, mm-hmm. then uh, then that seems like something Brian wouldn't really want to have happen. But he seemed right. pretty pretty close to his father and was interested in bringing him out to things, especially if he was already planning on bringing him to more and more of these meetings and stuff. I don't think he would kill him if he was already saying that they were gonna. You know, going yeah. to dinners and stuff. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Like, I don't think he would make plans. Yeah. Prokly, but... on the other hand, everything that she has offered us has come up to... There's been no solid proof on her end in any of her defenses mm-hmm. that anything she's telling is truthful. It's all just sort of been on her word. Yes. It's even been contra- contradicted contradictory evidence, right? Like... Mm-hmm. Her talking about her uh, her father's willingness to to find a number that works and and like there being an endpoint which runs counter to his entire personality and anecdotally his reaction to continuously being badgered to sell from but, multiple people. I don't. Know but I'd... then we have his behavior at the SCA meeting, mm-hmm. which indicates to me someone who is depressed and maybe just hit a breaking point. Maybe he did decide as a result of those meetings that this is no longer worth pursuing. If he was this upset that he was getting drunk at a high society event on cooking wine. (laughs) So what you're saying is that we're not looking for a killer because the killer is already dead. (laughs) I don't. Th- I, not quite. I mean, like, I'm not convinced I, any of these people killed him. I think there is a killer who remains at large, and then somebody who arranged that. That's that's me. I don't know if anyone else believes that, but I would be prepared to believe that somebody killed Herobian under somebody else's instructions. Where's the deed? Mm-hmm. Still mm-hmm. have not found it. Because when we went to the archive, or not the archive, but the Azorius Orzhov vault, the deed had been removed not after his death. It had been gone for a while. For the sake of, because there's so many people here, I'm just going to start flashing up NPCs and we can talk about who they are and what they know. This is, of mm-hmm. course, Prion. This is the one who's been taking his dad to the events. 
Uh, this is Proclia. This is the one who wants her dad to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, this is... Uh, who else did you want to talk about? You said Bruno was definitely the person who would be benefiting the most, probably. He seems mm -hmm. to be quite keen to get this built. Mm -hmm. uh, on the side of people who would also like to have it built, you have this guy who feels like his entire career is hinging on getting this stupid stadium built, and it's not really possible to build it any other way because this good fellow, this good-natured fellow has told him it's not really possible. Uh, other people who would stand to benefit is this guy because it makes his swamp ball team looks good to have a big arena to play in. And of course, uh, all of these kids mm -hmm. uh, who would probably enjoy having a new arena to play in because it's high profile, but maybe they don't care that much. I feel like we've ruled them out too. But yeah. Well, I mean, one of them had no good alibi, which was mm -hmm. Pova. And the other three had each other as an alibi because they were partying mm -hmm. um we didn't find out what they would have been celebrating or if they were celebrating anything maybe mm -hmm. they're i don't know it's i cameron don't know university athletes terribly well mm -hmm. i i knew a couple but they you just party because it's a friday or a saturday yeah. yeah okay yeah but my do try like when we showed them the image of Arobian, none of them recognized him. And unless right. you're you were you've been drugged or you've been under magical influence, you absolutely would recognize a person that you have murdered. I, yeah, you would think so, right? Um, but then there's still the matter of the apple scented mm -hmm. uh, swamp ball grease, which seems like a weird thing to just have randomly hey, turn up. Quick question: uh, Did we smell any apple? Uh, a a any non-on-the-table apple at the SCA meal. Oh, at the SCA meal? I'm going to say one of those kids probably smelled like apple-scented swamp gall grease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe one of them smelled like whatever this, the 5th District is famous for. We're going to say flowers. One of them smelled like... We're going to say the big ogre, whose name was... Damn it, I wrote it down here. We're going to say the big ogre, whose name was Galonica, smelled mm -hmm. like flowers. Mm -hmm. Scented swamp ball grease does not seem to be the smoking gun that it appeared to be I, at the beginning of this campaign. I have very... I just don't understand why it was there then. Like, what, what would have caused Red this? Red herring. Thing? Yeah, people drop things all the time, but... Sure, but in in the factory that... In the factory that one man works in solo, why there, it would be there mm -hmm. is odd. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I understand the concept of a red hair, mm -hmm. but there still needs to be a reason for it to be there. Oh yeah, yeah. Push blame. Weird place to push blame if the case falls apart immediately. Wait, I'm not here. An yeah. innocent party could simply have dropped it somewhere in the vicinity. I mean, it could be the coach for all we know. Yeah. We haven't really spoken to him. He w he didn't seem particularly receptive to your line of questioning. We, no, we talked to him, didn't we? Might you mind read him? I think so. Have sworn, he seemed pretty above. I thought. Board. I thought Enor just mind read the students, the athletes. I think he definitely talked in his office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. I, I honestly can't remember when we uh, when we activated the mind read. But so so you have so you have on one hand you have Proclia who mm. wants to sell, which benefits a whole lot of established in, uh, interest in the sixth district. Uh, and then you have Prian, who doesn't want to sell, which benefits himself and a few, I would say, niche interests for mm -hmm. the traditional food society, the bog preservation society, who are having a meeting that you didn't go to, but it would be very similar to the traditional food society uh, and all of that stuff. Uh, so you have two people who have honestly, I would say, extremely good motive. But yeah. it seems that Prian was telling the truth, at least to, uh, about why he was taking his dad out, according to what Nithis said. Uh, but she did say that Prian was very insistent. Yeah, this was definitely not like this is Herobian's not, idea. This was not Herobian's idea. And I don't think, I think that it, I was trying to give you the impression that nobody else in the SCA loved having Herobian no. around because he was an unpleasant, mm -hmm. ill-tempered, gross guy. Uh, who ate mostly dessert while he was there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was unpopular. Nobody seemed like they... The Chamber of Commerce didn't seem like they were going out of their way to like, help a local entrepreneur. The SCA didn't seem to really care about mm -hmm. him that much. Mm -hmm. They don't mind the product, but they certainly don't seem to 
be invested in it as a concept. Mm -hmm. But the like, the deed is the one thing that we can't like square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think. I think we got to find that deed. More yeah. Than well, anything. whoever has it, because it's it clearly wasn't just like a momentary decision. If the deed has been missing, mm -hmm. if somebody went in weeks ago to get it, then this was not like something that was planned at the spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. So that brings up why he was killed when he was killed. Yeah. So while well, after after you've made your wonderful thing, you're gonna nog. Your badge is gonna ring. Bling, 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 bling. Reboot. <laughs> hey Nog, how's it going? Uh you well, you know, um, we've got yawn, and yawn's always a good time. Oh, I love making a mind palace. It's so fun. All right. Um, hey, I'm really sorry it's taken so long to get the samples back from Jeffrey that you pulled from the university like two days ago or like the other day at this point. But like I said, that uh, that mole god running amok has just jammed up the works here. But uh, you, uh, I've got some interesting, uh, I've got some stuff for you. So you ran, you sent us two uh, uh, samples from the university press. One was from some wet ink and one was from some dry ink. Remember? Yep. Good news. That's ink. Perfect. It's not the it's not that dust you found, which we don't know what that is. Yeah. It's not that. Uh, but you know what? I thought I might do some uh, some digging into some other things and see if what I could find for you. So I looked into Procly and Prian's financial records, since both of them seem to have a motive for uh, for offing their dad, even mm -hmm. though they claim they didn't. So anyhow, I found out that uh, Proclia seems to have gotten uh, a 50,000 Zeno payment from the local power smashing club because they're sponsoring a new doggy daycare she wants to open. And uh, I don't know if that's entirely legitimate, but if you know any forensic accountants, that might be someone you could talk to them about. <laughs> And uh, Brian also seems to have some strange financial activity. He has a series of payments that start going back about four months. They mm -hmm. started off sporadically, but they seem to have settled on a bi-weekly schedule recently. Every Saturday morning, 2,000 Zenos. Last payment, Selesny 2. The first, the second, uh, second day of the first month, 102. Uh, credited to AG Productions. After Gossage. <laughs> That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Wait, eight productions? I don't know what that means. That's not a registered company that we can find. It appears to be a front for something. That would make sense. Well, that's that's good to know. I mean, it's a it's a it's a shame that the thing that we that we went to grab grab didn't work out. But mm -hmm. this is a this is a good piece of info. Yeah, who was the payment for Proc to Proclia coming from? It was from the local. It was from the Sixth District Power Smashing Club. Power smashing? What is power smashing? Uh, it's something that I mentioned in sort of like mafioso overtones when I was talking about uh, the 6th District Chamber of Commerce. Oh, one of the founding associations of the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah. Okay. okay. Power smashers? When I said that, you know, if you cross the Chamber of Commerce, that mm -hmm. the best that you can hope for is that they send some local power smashers over to teach you a lesson before they sick the cops on you. Mm. Right. The more we hear about the Chamber of Commerce, the more it actually just feels like a group of Yakuza families. A little bit, yeah. yeah. It is, it is. It, it was is. It was a mafioso <laughs> group that has become legitimate over a thousand years. Well, I, this is perfect. Um, it sounds like we've, uh, we've got a lead that we can follow once we've um, followed someone else. <laughs> yep. All right. True new leads. Good to know. All right, thanks, Nog. It was really nice to talk to you. Maybe we'll meet one day. God, I hope so. Do you need help with anything? Should... The 10th district is a mess right now. There's a whole string of murder cases going on. It's so miserable. I'm I <laughs> we're I'm struggling, but we'll figure it out. Okay. All right, talk to you later, Nog. Bye. Well, that's good to know. Okay. <laughs> the plot thickens. Yeah, friends of accounting. Follow a teen. <laughs> Well, There's first, gotta be a better way to word that. <laughs> first, you have to go to a swamp ball game, mm -hmm. otherwise, Slock's boss will get angry, oh, yeah. and it will make mm -hmm. the it'll make the investigation look weird. Yeah, you still we'll, have social responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But we'll find out all about what happens next time on Bylaw and Order Two. Bye, everybody. 